Intermittent fasting, Madame Chic, and the Jane Austen diet. What do these all have in common? And how did I lose all of the baby weight after having four kids? We're going to talk about this in today's video, so stay tuned. Hi everyone, Jennifer here, and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. If you are new to my channel, I am a wife, a mother of four children, and I'm also an author, and I have the Madame Chic series and Connoisseur Kids. Those are my books. And today we're going to talk about something that has been highly requested. People have been asking me how I've lost the baby weight because I have four children, ages 10, eight, four, and two. And I have recently, well, over the past several months, managed to finally lose the baby weight and get back to my original pre-pregnancy weight uh, from before I even had children. I have real life experience with this and I have a system that works really well for me and the best part about this system is that it is completely free and it's something that anybody can do as long as you have the go ahead from your doctor. So we're going to be talking about intermittent fasting today, how it relates to Madame Chic and her philosophy with eating that I learned while I was living in Paris. We're also going to talk about the Jane Austen diet because that is a book I have read in the past year as well. And all of these three eating philosophies come together to create how I not only enjoy my meals and don't deprive myself of what I eat because I am not on a diet and this is not a diet video, but it is to show you the healthy way that I have found to approach food and eating and also weight loss. This might be a longer video. If you look down below, you'll see library cards uh, addressing each section. We're gonna talk about intermittent fasting first, what it is, the benefits of it. Then we're gonna talk about Madame Chic and my philosophy that I learned while I was living in Paris and the Jane Austen diet to tie it all in. We're about to jump into the topics, but before we do, I would like to say a disclaimer that this video is not intended to give medical advice. I'm just sharing my own personal experience uh, with intermittent fasting and the regimen that I keep for my diet and exercise. So you should definitely ask your doctor if this would be right for you. And this video is not intended as any form of health counseling or advice. Okay, let's talk about intermittent fasting. I bet most of you have heard about it. I had heard about it for a few years, but I just, I don't know, I didn't think much about it. I didn't think it would be for me. Fasting seems kind of extreme. I don't like the idea of starving myself, or at least that's what I would think about when I would think about fasting. Um, but it turns out that I was very wrong, and I decided to look into it earlier this year. I have four children, as you know, and the youngest is two years old now. So this is around the time where I'm thinking, okay, we don't plan on having any more children, so it's time for me to start uh, losing the baby weight. I didn't worry about it at all while I was pregnant over the past 10 years, pregnant and breastfeeding. Um, I just didn't worry about it. I would naturally lose some of the baby weight, then I would gain it back again with each pregnancy. And I thought, you know, I'm not going to stress about that. I'm just going to have my children enjoy being a mom in the pregnancy stage. And then when we feel that we're done, then I will look into uh, returning hopefully to something like how my body was before I started having kids. I was sort of looking into it. I was doing pretty well, you know, I was a few pounds over where I would want to be. But again, I was not hard on myself with it. I give myself slack. I have four kids and we homeschool and they're young. So I'm not trying to get down to like a stick figure. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's just so not my priority. But then in March, we all were on lockdown and the world really changed and I could foresee myself developing bad habits, being home all day, every day, and then the stress that also goes along with that. Now, if you've read my Madame Chic books, you know that I talk about how snacking is so not chic, and by that I mean mindless snacking. So we're gonna to get to that in a moment. So I already have that philosophy in my head that I shouldn't just graze on food all day long like a cow, <laughs> like many people do. Now, some people have to eat all day long for medical reasons, but I am not one of those people and I don't need to constantly snack and constantly eat. And I could see that I was kind of going in that direction, kind of stress eating a little bit at night and eating a lot of things outside of my meal times. 
So I decided to look into intermittent fasting because I needed structure to my day. So I did a lot of research as always, and there are a few key things that I watched that really convinced me to try this. The first thing I watched was a TEDx talk by Cynthia Thurlow, and it was called Intermittent Fasting Transformational Technique, and it's had 7.2 million views. And I loved what she had to say about it. It really intrigued me and gave me a lot of information. I then watched so many things on YouTube and I fell down the rabbit hole as I want to do. And I watched many different videos. Another helpful one that I watched is uh, by Dr. Mike and he has over 6 million YouTube subscribers. He's an actual doctor. So I did a lot of research into the science behind it. And then I watched testimonials of people who tried it. And I thought that it sounded just right for me based on my prior philosophies from Madame Chic and also from what I read in the Jane Austen diet. So I have been doing intermittent fasting for the past eight months and during that time I have lost over 20 pounds. Yes, I have lost over 20 pounds over the past eight months and the results were really shocking for me. I can't believe how easy it was, especially because I'm not dieting. I'm eating whatever I want to in my eating window. So what is intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting is not a diet. It's not about what you eat, but when you eat. It is a way of scheduling your meals so that you get the most that you can out of them. So again, it's not a diet and that's perfect for me because my main philosophy with food is to deprive yourself not. You know me, I love my sweets. I'm a big dessert person. I will have tea time every day. I'll have cake every day or chocolate and I don't wanna give that up. So intermittent fasting is not about what you eat, but it's about when you eat. The simplest way I've heard it phrased is by Hugh Jackman, the actor, when they asked him about his intermittent fasting schedule. And he said, I fast for 16 hours and I eat for eight hours. And that is the simplest way to describe the way that I eat now. Now, most of you already fast and don't even know it. Obviously, when you are sleeping, you are fasting. And when you have breakfast, you break the fast, hence the word breakfast. But a lot of people have breakfast when they first wake up just because they feel that they should or they've been told to do this, but it's not strictly necessary. Now, I was one of those people. I would eat breakfast early in the morning when I woke up before the kids would wake up because I wanted to be ready for the day. I wanted to get my breakfast out of the way but I wasn't really hungry when I was having this breakfast. And I realized that. So to just break it down in the most simple terms, I stop eating usually at around five or 5.30 in the evening, and I don't eat again until the following morning at nine or 9.30 a.m. So I will fast for 16 hours, and I will have an eight hour eating window. During my eight hour eating window, I will eat three meals a day plus tea. I eat whatever I want. I do not deprive myself and I do not diet. I eat full fat. You've all seen my cooking videos. I use heavy cream. I have butter, sugar, <laughs> desserts. Of course I eat healthy too. I eat a lot of vegetables and proteins as well, but I eat during that eight hour window. Now during that window, I could have three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Sometimes I'll only have lunch and dinner. Sometimes I'll only have breakfast and a late lunch. It just depends. But the point is that I have an eight hour eating window and a 16 hour fasting window. So we have always had early dinners in our household. We've always eaten at five. <laughs> so I think even before we had kids, Ben and I would just eat dinner at five, like the early bird special. I don't know why, but I would eat dinner at five. And then my trouble was that I stay up till about 1130 at night working. So I'd eat dinner at five and then usually around 9.30 or 10, I would get hungry and I would have a second smaller meal, usually cheese or crackers or fruit or sometimes, yes, even a bowl of cereal, something to just get me over that hungry episode I would have at about 9.30 at night. So I realized that that particular meal was my problem. So when I decided to try intermittent fasting, we would eat dinner at about, you know, five o'clock basically, usually finish at around 5.30, and then I would stop. And then after that, when you're in your fasting state, I would just drink water at that point and not eat again until the following morning at about 9.30 a.m. Now, what happens if we eat a later dinner? If we have people over, we see people, that's totally fine. 
If we were to meet up with people and eat a late dinner, although we really haven't been doing this because of COVID, I would just eat the late dinner and then not worry about it the next day. So I'm not completely strict with it, right? But that's very few and far between. But if we eat late as a family, like let's say we eat at seven, then I would eat the next morning for the first time at 11 a.m. So it's that whole process of fasting. I've written a few notes here just so I don't forget things, but Dr. Mike on YouTube says that humans have always fasted. Intermittent fasting is just a rebranding of what our bodies have always been doing. We fast every time we sleep and our bodies are capable of handling this. And also, I really liked what Dr. Mike said about this. He said, intermittent fasting is not starving. When you're fasting, your body is using stored nutrients and stored energy forms in order to make your body continue to function. He also talks about how chronic stress is bad for the body, but acute stress is actually good for the body. And fasting is acute stress. What's another example of acute stress? Exercising, if you go run a mile or so, your body is in acute stress as you are in your exercising state, but that's good for the body, right? It's good for your brain function, it's good for weight loss. So this is a good uh, muscle to have. I pulled up an article from Women's Health Magazine that is fully backed by science with lots of references and research. And so they list the benefits of intermittent fasting and I'm just briefly going to mention them to you here. Weight loss, improved insulin sensitivity, better concentration, lower cholesterol, better sleep, reduced inflammation, mindful eating habits, better immunity, delayed aging, and clearer skin. And I've honestly found so much of this to be true for myself. Not only the weight loss has been a big deal for me, but also I just feel the best I've ever felt in my life. And I really love fasting. Now I, have so much more to say about intermittent fasting and I'm sure you have a lot of questions. So if you have any questions, please leave them down below and I can definitely address them in a follow-up video. So to summarize my intermittent fasting, I fast for 16 hours. Much of that time I am actually asleep so I don't even know that I'm fasting and I have an eight hour eating window. During the eight hour eating window, I try to eat a healthy diet but I don't deprive myself of desserts or anything that I want, really. I'll just eat whatever I want um, in a very civilized manner, which we'll talk about in the next two parts of the video. But that is what I do. When I am fasting, I am only drinking water or black tea or black coffee. So no uh, milk in my coffee, no sugar, obviously, no wine, nothing like that, just water and black tea or black coffee. Let's talk about lessons from Madame Chic and how the intermittent fasting philosophy ties in with that. So Lessons from Madame Chic is the first book that I ever published, and if you haven't read it, I highly recommend you do. It's, it's a really good book. Because of the lessons that I learned while I was living in France with a very traditional, old-fashioned, dare I say, French family, and they had very different lifestyle habits to what we have here in America, and maybe even to what people have in France because they were very traditional. So the first three chapters of Lessons from Madame Chic deals with diet and exercise. The first chapter is called Snacking is So Not Chic. The second chapter is called Deprive Yourself Not. And the third chapter is Exercise is a Part of Life, Not a Chore. So when people hear that snacking is so not chic, they think, they think like the 10 item wardrobe. They think, well, this is so extreme. But what I mean by this is that mindless snacking is not chic. I'm talking about walking around the house with a bag of Doritos, shoveling it into your mouth, or just kind of eating something over the kitchen sink, or just you know having Halloween candy all day long. <laughs> this is not chic, okay? I'm not saying I don't do it. I'm just saying that it's not chic and I think most of you would probably agree with me. And when you do mindless snacking, you are not hungry for your main meals. And it's just true. It also piles on the weight over time. It's just not good. So mindless snacking is so not chic. But chapter two is called Deprive Yourself Not. And I'm just gonna read to you a little excerpt from it and tell you how this relates to intermittent fasting. So this is on page 14 of Lessons from Madame Chic. I write, as an American and specifically a Southern Californian, I was initially a bit hesitant when confronted with these decadent meals, because I'm talking about how Madame Chic made really decadent meals. 
Was I going to become fat while living in France? I'd hoped to return home to my friends and family, chic and mysterious, perhaps with a new haircut, a la Sabrina, not with a new spare tire around my waist. But then I observed Famille Chic. The entire family, Monsieur and Madame and their son, were in great shape. None was overweight. They were living testaments to the famous French paradox. Hmm, if they didn't gain any weight, perhaps I wouldn't either. To deprive yourself not means many things. Deprive yourself not of rich and decadent foods. Deprive yourself not of dessert and sweet treats. And deprive yourself not of the experience of fine dining. Dining where you totally enjoy yourself and nourish not only your body, but your soul as well. So that's what deprive yourself not means. Now there's always exceptions to this and your doctor may have told you you can't eat XYZ. There are certain things that you can't eat and of course you must heed that. But I think a lot of us put uh, societal restrictions on what we can eat and just because some people uh, demonize carbs we think well I better not eat any carbs or some people say you shouldn't eat sugar then you, you just say well I'd, I'll skip the dessert and you deprive yourself of these things that you truly want and then at some point you binge, you let it all out and you just start eating, eating, eating and then you go back to being really strict with yourself. So that's what I like to avoid. I don't like diets, I don't like restrictive diets. It would never work for me because I take too much pleasure out of food. I love my desserts, I love eating uh, just really decadent meals and you know this if you watch my what's for dinner meals and I can leave that playlist down below. So really to deprive yourself not means that you should enjoy your food, you should enjoy eating and not have that um, talk in the back of your head about you know you should feel guilty for eating this or you're going to have to hit the gym tomorrow if you eat that bread. I don't believe in that. I believe in a healthy and positive attitude toward food. And you can have this on intermittent fasting because intermittent fasting does not tell you what not to eat. It just tells you when to eat because your body is working hard while you're fasting to pull from those stored nutrients. And that's good for your body and good for healthy weight loss. Another way that intermittent fasting relates to the Madame Chic philosophy is through not snacking. Now, in Lessons from Madame Chic, I tell you the story about how it was my first evening in Madame Chic's home, and I was just used to snacking all day long. I was a college student in Southern California, very casual, and you know, my roommates and I would just eat all the time. <laughs> So when I got to Madame Chic's house, everything was very formal. The kitchen was in the back of the apartment. We had a sit down dinner that was quite formal and I was very nervous at the dinner, especially on my first night, so I didn't eat that much. And so in the evening I was starving. I was going for my late night snack. So anyway, on my way to the kitchen, Madame Chic stopped me and she asked me what I was doing and I felt kind of intimidated. So I just said, oh, I'm just going to get some water. She said, oh, I'll get that for you. So she brought me some water and that was it. And I knew at that point, this was not a kitchen that was going to be open for snacking. And the Chic family that I lived with, they never snacked, never. <laughs> they, did, they just never snacked. The closest I ever saw them to having a quote unquote snack was if they were hosting a dinner party and they would put out a little appetizer tray or something like that. Madame Chic would have an afternoon tea. Uh, one time I was not feeling well and she made me a, a chocolat chaud so she'd give me a hot chocolate. So a very civilized snack would be sitting down with a cup of tea and a treat or having a hot chocolate with a treat or that type of thing in the afternoon. But you certainly didn't go rummage around in the refrigerator in the evening. That was a big no-no. It was off limits. So in a way, in the Madame Chic household, when dinner was finished, your eating was finished too. It was done. The kitchen was closed and you were not in there. Now they did eat an early breakfast, but that was because Monsieur Chic worked quite early and he would get up at 5 a.m. to have his breakfast. So they did not delay their breakfasts and so they certainly weren't doing intermittent fasting. But what I take from it is that they did not snack and they certainly didn't eat anything after dinner. All right, let's talk about the Jane Austen diet. This is a really great book and it was written by Brian Kozlowski. It says, join Brian Kozlowski as he unlocks his health and happiness manifesto straight from Jane Austen's pen, revealing why her prescriptions for achieving total body bloom still matter in the 21st century. So he goes through Jane Austen's writings and derives wisdom from them, kind of like what I like to do with books as well. And he derives all of her dieting wisdom. So this is a really good book. And it's funny because as I was reading this, I was thinking there's a lot of intermittent fasting wisdom here as well. 
So let's talk about some of that. One of the key principles of the Jane Austen diet, and funny enough of the Madame Chic diet, if you were to call it that, are that health and happiness are exquisitely interconnected. Health and happiness. Happiness, joie de vivre, enjoying your food, right? So uh, I'm gonna read to you from page 64 here in the Jane Austen diet, and listen to this. Uh, Kozlowski writes, postponing breakfast for two hours after you wake up is one of the easiest ways to incorporate small routine fasts in your diet. You are in fact supposed to arrive at breakfast a bit more hungry than usual, a concept literally built into the word itself, i.e. at breakfast we break our fast. Austin obviously grasped this historic wisdom. Her late breakfast is truly a mini fast in disguise. Indeed, anytime we give our bodies a temporary break from food, we start reaping the known benefits of fasting, a biological repair mode with a slew of miraculous side effects lowering our cholesterol and blood sugar, burning fat, and regenerating cells. And while you won't find anything as tiresome as a 40-day fast in Austin world, we'll leave that to the creepy hermit who lives in the Hermitage on the Northanger Abbey estate, thank you very much, Jane's mini fasts in the morning are still surprisingly effective and far more sane. So it goes on to say, as modern health experts now realize our bodies only need to go about 12 hours without food to enter a state called negative protein balance, the cellular repair mode that makes fasting so beneficial. And while you could technically do one of these mini fasts any time of day, it's unquestionably easiest in the morning since you're already sleeping through most of it. So he talks about in this book about how in Jane Austen they would prolong their breakfasts. You don't have to eat as soon as you wake up. Oftentimes you're not hungry. If you send your kids to school and let's say you try to give them a breakfast before they go, we had this problem when our daughter went to school. She would get up so early, I'd give her breakfast and she would say, I'm not hungry. <laughs> you know, it's just too early. Uh, so we tend to force ourselves to eat, but it's not necessary. You can prolong it. Actually, I, I want to cut in and say right there that intermittent fasting is not for children. I'm not recommending that for your children, okay? I'm talking about adults, but you notice that sometimes even in your kids when they uh, eat a really early breakfast, they might not even be hungry, you know? So postponing your eating, uh, is a good idea. Another component of the Jane Austen diet to, is to actually eat your heartiest meal in the middle of the day, and this is also something that we do. So here's a little secret that you might not know. Oftentimes when you watch my dinners of the week videos, we have those meals as our main lunchtime meal because we work from home, we homeschool, we're all home, and I have the energy in the afternoon to do this, so I will cook a big meal for lunch we will have that for lunch, and then for dinner I'll have something really light at about five o'clock usually. So let's talk about what Jane Austen says. Let's look at page 69 here in the Pemberley meal plan. It says, eating, as Jane says, your heartiest meal earlier in the day is what most of humanity has always proposed. Afternoon dinners were the preferred norm from Roman times to the Middle Ages, a preference that continued well into the Victorian era. Literature buffs will certainly have noticed the second sentence of Jane Eyre states that Mrs. Reed, the housekeeper, dined early, and Nellie in Wuthering Heights won't consider serving dinner any later than one o'clock. Many modern-day Brits, especially in North England, still cling to the custom calling their afternoon meal dinner instead of lunch. And the same goes for diners in France, Spain, and Germany, and most of Europe for that matter, all preferring to eat their heartiest meal in the afternoon at lunch rather than in the evening at dinner. It says nothing could be more sensible, especially for weight control. Closest to the Regency concept of dinner, a large European-style lunch is undeniably healthier than a large American-style dinner for two reasons. First, filling up on a large late lunch cleverly solves the modern problem of afternoon munchies, that dreaded 3 to 4 p.m. hunger gap when some of our worst food choices are made. Second, eating your biggest meal earlier in the day gives your body ample time to digest and work off that substantial influx of calories before bed. The alternative, going to sleep on a dinner-laden stomach, sets you up for unnecessary battle with biology since your metabolism naturally slows down at night. Uh, he's really funny, the author of this book, so I chuckled throughout this entire book. But there you go. Now that is not a characteristic of intermittent fasting per se. They don't tell you what to eat on intermittent fasting. It's just about the fasting hours. But I personally 
eat uh, a large lunch, a pretty large lunch, usually with dessert and all sorts of things. And then at dinner, I will have something much lighter. This isn't always the case, but this is generally how I eat. Jane Austen also believed in depriving yourself not. There's several parts in this book that talk about how eating bread, high quality bread, is a good thing how desserts and sugar and all of that in moderation, which is always the key, is also a benefit. I will definitely leave the Jane Austen diet link down below, as well as my own book, Lessons from Madame Chic, and all of the resources that I have been referencing in this video. Let's close by talking about exercising. Do I still exercise? And the answer is yes. And you know me, I am not the best at exercising. I wish that I was better and that I did weight training and classes, but I don't. The two forms of exercise that I have are walking and rebounding. That's a whole other story, but I do love to jump on my rebounder and I find it to be a very effective exercise. So you know me, I'm all about efficiency. So I will leave my rebounder link down below as well as a playlist for my rebounding videos if you're interested in seeing that. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel because I am going to discuss how intermittent fasting and the 10 item wardrobe are similar. And yes, they are very similar. You're probably thinking I've gone crazy, but you just need to hear me out on this. I find that the less food you eat, and by that, I mean you're not grazing and snacking all day long, but you have a few key meals that you look forward to every day, the higher quality those meals are going to be. And there's so many parallels with that and the 10 item wardrobe that I have found. So make sure you are subscribed to my channel to see the other parts of this discussion. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm sure many of you have a lot of questions. Please feel free to leave those down below. If you've tried intermittent fasting or if you've seen wonderful results from the Madame Chic philosophy or the Jane Austen diet, please let us know in the comment section down below. Also, I'd like to mention that I have a private membership club here on YouTube called The Chic Society. If you hit the join button, which you will see down below, you can join The Chic Society and the lowest tier is only $1.99 a month. I do one vodcast a week and we go live or do a Zoom call once a month. And it's a wonderful community of connoisseurs and we get together and really enjoy each other's company. So I'd just like to invite you to join that. Thank you so much, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.